Hi everybody, this is a short video to explain the different things which affect the amount of exports and imports that an economy has. And this is looking at the final component of aggregate demand, because you'll remember that aggregate demand is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus, and this is what we're really looking at now, exports minus imports. So that section is a bit of aggregate demand about exports and imports. And what you need to remember is RCPN. These are the four main different areas. So exports, things that you are selling to other countries, and imports are things that you are bringing in from a different country, you're buying it from a different country. So R, the first one, this stands for real income. Within your economy, if your real incomes, for example, increase, as an example, that will mean that people have got more disposable income to spend. Generally speaking, consumption will go up. And when people go shopping, many of the things that people buy will have been imported from somewhere else. So you'll see an increase in imports. Because in your country, people have more money and therefore they're shopping more. And a lot of the things that they buy in the shops will have been imported from another country. So real incomes will make a difference. The opposite, if we have a fall in incomes, then people in the economy won't be shopping as much and therefore you'll have a decrease in imports. This one not affecting the exports. The second one, C, that stands for currency value. Because an economy has their own currency and you can see how much of another currency they can buy with their own currency. That's the strength of your currency. And the thing to remember here is this spiced. If it'll fit, spiced. And this stands for strong pound imports cheap exports dear dear is an old-fashioned word for expensive and this is how to remember how the value of your currency is going to affect your exports and your imports if your currency is strong so that means you can buy a lot of another currency with your own then that's going to mean that for your country your imports will be cheap because your currency buys lots and lots of someone else's currency so your imports will be very cheap and your exports are going to be expensive for people in other current countries because they have to pay a lot to buy your currency. Because if you're buying something from a country, you have to pay for it in their currency. So in the UK, we have the pound. If somebody in France wants to buy something from the UK, they have to pay for it in pounds. If the pound is very strong, against their currency, in that case the euro, then that will mean that for people in France to buy things from the UK will be expensive because they'll have to give a lot of euros just to get one pound. The third one, P, this is about protectionism. And protectionism is to do predominantly with tariffs and quotas. A tariff is like a tax on an import. If you put a tax onto something, that causes the price of it to go up. So if we have tariffs on things coming into the UK, for example, that will make them more expensive and then the demand for them would be lower. A quota is a limit on the amount of something imported. We know that if this happens, there will be less of it available. And in that case, it's likely also that the price will go up. So if you have more protectionism, you're going to have less imports coming into your country. And it also works the other way around. 
if another country puts a lot of protectionism in place, we might find it harder to sell things to them. This is a bit like a barrier to getting things into a country. And the last one is non-price factors. This is to do with the products, goods or services, which are being exported or imported. So if the quality, for example, of your products is very high, you're more likely to be able to export more products. Also, if something you are making as a country is unique, you're the only country making it, then that will be another reason that you probably will export more. Another thing is you may innovate a lot with your products. They may include new technology and advances which other countries really want and therefore you'll export more. Likewise, if things that you might import are more innovative, higher quality, more unique, then you might be more likely to import those things. 